Welcome back to Kiersey's Virtual Classroom. Today we are learning about seismographs and how to read them. So this is in your lab. Um, and I did explain a little bit how to read seismographs in your earthquake lecture, but I kind of want to do it pencil and paper so you kind of get a better idea. So these are three different seismographs from three different locations taken during the Ridgecrest earthquake in 2019. Okay, so we have three different seismographs from three different locations, but from the same earthquake event. And we're going to compare them so that we can determine an approximate magnitude using this magnitude chart. Okay, this isn't 100% accurate, but for our purposes of learning the relationship between distance, our PS interval, amplitude and magnitude, it'll work perfect. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is determine what, where our P waves start and where our S waves start. So if we look at this home seismograph, we see that there's a baseline of nothing, and then all of a sudden it peaks right here. Okay, so where it starts to peak here, that's our P wave. So our P wave arrives here, okay? So we can determine what that time is. So all we have to do is take a ruler, or if you don't have a ruler, you can take a, some sort of a straight edge, another piece of paper or something, and draw a line down. And down here on the x-axis, we have our time, okay? So this is five seconds, 10 seconds, 15, 20, 25, there's 30. So I would say this is, we can approximate 26 seconds. So our P wave arrived at 26 seconds. Now, when does the S wave arrive? The S wave arrives when it starts to peak significantly. So you can see a difference between these lines, right? And these much larger lines. So these are P waves, these are S waves, okay? So we find the line that's pretty significant. I'd say it's this one here. And we're gonna mark that as our S wave arrival. Take the straight edge, bring it down to the X axis again. So here is our S wave, and that's at about, we'll call it 34 seconds. So the lag time or the PS interval is the difference between the P wave arrival and the S wave arrival. So remember lag time is the PS interval. Okay, so here it's 34 minus 26, right? So <clears throat> that means that our lag time is eight seconds, okay? Now to determine amplitude, you wanna look at the highest peak. So this is our zero mark here at three. And so our highest peak is approximately this guy here. And so you can estimate that to be 21 and a half ish. Anywhere between 20 and 22 is fine. I'm not too particular on this because depending on how you print this out or how you look at it on um, on your computer screen, it's going to change. So we'll, we're just going to call that 21. It's close to 21. And this is in millimeters. Okay. So that information you can then translate to your magnitude chart. Okay. So we did the first one. We did home together. You can do the next two following the same steps I did on this one. Okay, but let's plot the home station. So our lag time or our SP, PS interval was eight seconds. So on here we have two, four, six, and there's eight. So we're gonna put a little dot there. And then we have an amplitude of 21. So here we have 20, so 21 is probably, that's 50. 
pretty close to that line. And then all you need to do is take a ruler or a straight edge and draw a line through. Then you read off of your magnitude chart approximately where that hits. So if this is four and this is five, this is about four and a half. And halfway between four and four and a half is 4.25. So the magnitude based off of the chart we looked at and the way that we printed it out, the magnitude is approximately 4.25 based on this one seismic station. Then you would go through and do the other two and you would get an average magnitude for that earthquake based on the three seismic stations that you looked at. Okay, so hopefully that explains a little bit more how you would read seismographs and interpret what the magnitude would be based on seismograph data.